Well, Pedro, this is it. It's Saturday, last day of the Pigeon Forge Fall Rod Run. Two long weekends of looking at a lot of cool cars, and uh, my feet are saying is ready for some time off. Uh, where we're going today is we're going to go to uh, the Lacante Center and uh, walk around the outside, and the outside is going to have a lot of parts for sale, engines for sale, uh, reproduction parts, uh, classic parts. Uh, and then we're going to go on inside of the Lacante Center. Inside the Lacante Center is where the uh, the pedigree cars are kept, the ones that are uh, number specific, the ones that are uh, professionally restored, the ones that are going after the, the prizes, and those I'm looking forward to. And uh, almost ready to go? Oh, you what, you want another story? Okay, Pedro. So last time, maybe. Uh, for those that hang on to the end of the video, I will tell them about the time that I might have gotten into a little speeding contest, again with another 289 Mustang. This time it was in uh, Virginia Beach. I had a 302, uh, nice, nice engine. And uh, we kind of got into a road race and uh, no, Pedro, I didn't win. No, Pedro, the Mustang didn't win either. Well, who won? Well, I'll tell you who won. My hubcaps won, but you'll have to watch to the end of the story to understand that one. Okay, let's go.
Well, Pedro, that was a lot of fun. I'll tell you, when we went to the outside of the Lacante Center and saw all the parts that you can purchase, man, I didn't realize you could buy full engines, full uh, four-pack, six-pack, eight-pack carburetors. You could buy uh, any part that you need to, to, to refurbish your car and uh, make it look new. But inside the Lacante Center, that was gorgeous. Those cars were so, so shiny. Uh, they hurt your eyes when you're looking at them, and they're all, all originals, matching numbers, uh, original parts, just just gloss. They're all after. Uh, I guess they gave 25 trophies out to the top 25. I tell you, it'd be hard to pick out uh, the true winner. Oh, oh, my story. Okay, well, here's how it goes. I had a Dodge Coronet 383. Loved the car. It was a four door, so it made it quite large. And uh, I was in. Uh, Oceana, Virginia, and uh, running parallel to the runway, there's a main access road, and then one block over, there's a, a parallel road, which is kind of a shortcut. And you went, traveled at about a mile, and there was a, a main crossover, and then you cross over to the, uh, we're going to call it the runway road, but there's still, it's still off base, both roads are. And uh, light turned green, and I went ahead, and this Mustang 289 had the audacity to try and pass me on a two-lane country road. Now, two-lane country road, you know, it's the kind where barely two lanes wide, it drops off into the ravines on either sides, and then there's woods. I mean, these are not wide roads. So this Mustang pulls up and tries to pass me out. Well, me and my buddy looked over at this Mustang with four dudes sitting, and it said, no, nah, this ain't gonna happen. So I hit the floor, and I hit the, hit the pedal to the metal, and off we go, and again, I, I don't even know how fast we were going, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, if we got up there in speeds. Now, uh, remember, we had to actually brake to make the right-hand turn, and uh, the winner was unofficially those that happened to make it first into that right-hand turn over to the base. Well, I might have been faster than that uh, Mustang, but I learned very quickly that he could slow down a lot quicker than I do. Because sure enough, when we came up over the rise, and there was a car that had just come out and had come our way. Now, we're too wide. Well, I'm not too worried. I'm in the right lane, but the Mustang's in the left lane. We both lock up our brakes, and we go start slamming down rubber smoking. We can barely see the road. There's so much rubber burning in the roads, and uh, I wasn't going to stop. There wasn't any way my four-door was ever going to come close to stopping before I hit that car. The Mustang slowed down very nicely, pulled in behind me. I guess that car scooted around as we approached the uh, intersection. I started swerving like this, I started swerving like that, I did a swerve like that, and it's amazing what you remember. The last thing I remember seeing is my four hubcaps rolling down the road in front of my car, just like I had a car on it. Just rolled on the road, took a right, hit the embankment on that right-hand turn, shot up in the air into the woods. So I think my hubcaps won that race. Now the Mustang might have really argued because I slid far beyond that uh that road. I didn't stop for a couple hundred yards further up the road. The Mustang nicely pulled off into the right. So I learned a couple things. One is uh, you might be able to beat a 289 on the uh, acceleration, but you're not going to beat it when you have to stop quick because it sure beat me on that one. So I'm going to say my hubcaps won, but uh, it's amazing things that you remember in uh, the heat of the day. Now, you have to remember I don't speed a lot, but I guess I have this thing for 289 Mustangs. Well, this is Hughes and Pedro for Outdoor Staycations. Uh, we're done with our, uh, our rod runs for the next uh, six or seven months, and we're going back to our regular videos, so I hope that you subscribe, uh, give us a thumbs up, and uh, starting tomorrow, we're heading out for a couple months. We're heading up to the beet harvest, and I think in two days, we're going to be over at uh, Bill Clinton's uh, library, and we'll do a video from Bill Clinton's library. So we're going to get back into our normal videos for a while. Again, Hughes and Pedro from Outdoor Staycations. We'll see you in a few days.